Hello and welcome back to another video. Now last week I made a video um, giving three reviews to three books that I thought were pretty bad um, and then that turned out how that turned out but it got a lot of good feedback in the comments so I'm pleased with that. However this week I want to give you um, three reviews on three good books that I have very recently read because in last week's video I did say I had been reading quite like a string of not so great books well, um, in the past week I've read some good books. I've also read a terrible book, but I shan't be talking about that. So the three books that I have read that I'm going to review here is a four star, a 4.5 star, and a five star read. Um, and they've all been read within the past two weeks, I believe. Um, so I may as well just jump into the first review. The first book that I'm going to talk about is my four star book, and that is Elizabeth Costello by J.M. Carizzi. Um, I read this book because when I was doing research for my thesis, um, I was looking into, I wouldn't say kind of like the anthropology of literature, more in line with how literature can be used as a tool slash method for producing ethnographies, which is sort of like the production of knowledge you get from doing anthropological research, research into people and their cultures, um, and you write down what you learn, and that is ultimately an ethnography. So through that research, lots of people, academics, end up talking about this book. Um, well, of, of course, Carizzi in general, but this book is the one that kind of they focus upon because they believe that this could be considered in some way like an ethnographic fiction. So the way that it is written is that it follows an author called Elizabeth Costello, the title character, and she travels around um, to different places and delivers speeches and throughout the chapters, each one is focused on a different speech that she gives. Um, there are other characters that she engages with and the speeches kind of are, are intertwined with what goes before and what goes after she delivers her speech. But it's not really like a traditional novel. Um, it doesn't particularly follow a narrative. It's more just like a pontification on the art of writing, the author's presence in their work. Um, but also, I guess, on animal rights. Most of these speeches are kind of academic deliveries that Kowitzi has made himself, either in journals or at symposiums, etc. Um, and then he has altered them to put them in this book and changed himself as a female author from Australia. So that poses a really interesting facet to what does that do to a book when you sort of fictionalise something that you have delivered yourself, um, and then what's he ultimately trying to say by putting them in this specific order and addressing the additional issues that Elizabeth Costello faces. So that's kind of why I was ultimately interested in it, because that sounded interesting, people were talking about it, it's relevant to my field of interests. Now I did enjoy this book, I gave it four stars, I did very much enjoy this book because I did like that um, it was almost like a series of philosophical talks, um, some about literature, some about animal rights and things. Um, and it's set in the 90s, so most of the, most of the writing was written in the 90s. However, it's published in the early 2000s, so 2003, I think. So, of course, the, the thoughts are contextualised within that time. So, for example, the animal rights sections seem very outdated now, because, because Elizabeth Costello is a vegetarian um, and is kind of promoting animal rights. Um, in, a, in a way that I think is more common, or a more common thought today, but back then it was, it was more like a radical and extreme thought. But what I think I like most about this is that whilst it is, in a sense, Carizzi sort of delivering his own opinions um, through the character of Elizabeth Costello, the fact that he chose to represent himself as a woman um, and then populate her experiences with others who have differing opinions makes it seem more like a dialogue that isn't so self-congratulatory, I guess. Where in Motherhood, where I hated that book because it was just the author's own opinions dressed up to feel fictional, this one measured the opinion with the opinions of others and it actually challenged itself. Um, and the main character, Elizabeth Costello, she's not a particularly likeable character. She's not delivered in a way that kind of makes her feel you should be rooting for her entirely. It adds like a very human side to her also, which um, I don't necessarily think is indicative of Carizzi's sense of self, which I think shows that he challenged himself whilst writing this. Um, and it was just really interesting. There are some things that I was on board with, some things I don't agree with that he said with, um, but because of the dialogic nature of this book, 
it made it so much easier to let, not feel that you were being preached at. Wouldn't recommend it to everyone. I think it's a very specific kind of book. It's written in a very specific kind of way. And it is, I guess, quite academic um, and not particularly a novel. There will be many reasons people wouldn't enjoy this. But for me, it, it fulfilled or it satisfied something that I was definitely looking for. And perhaps that's because I knew what it was before going in. I knew not to expect a novel, ultimately. So then the next book that I read, um, I mentioned in my last video, um, is Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melkor. I mentioned this because it's translated by Sophie Hughes, who was one of my favourite translators, and solidifying her as a favourite translator was partly because of this book. Um, I gave this book a 4.5 rating. Um, very much enjoyed it. Don't think it's as perfect as many people make it out to be, um, but it is a very strong and a very solid piece of literature. This book is set in Mexico, um, in a sort of small village slash town, um, kind of just off an express highway. It's populated by um, very realistically created characters, and within this village, the local witch, um, however you wish to perceive this witch and their powers, kind of the witch is found dead. So then the entire book is not so much dealing with the aftermath of the witch's death, but it's more kind of a look about how the witch's death came to be through the characters' movements within this town and with each other, including with the witch. It's a commentary on violence in these sort of small towns that are kind of driven by toxic masculinity and men kind of feeling that they have an authority or a, a, a power over everyone else within the place. It, it, this kind of conversation about masculinity is taken from a unique perspective, I think. It's one that you tend not to so much get within um, most books. I'm thinking of All That Man Is by Zaloy, which was a terrible book um, written by a man about masculinity and poorly done. This one, however, written by a woman and gives a much more feminist perspective to masculinity and um, makes it so much more nuanced. Each part of this book follows a different character um, and it kind of, it doesn't happen chronologically, it all kind of works together as it pieces the puzzle as to how the witch came to be dead. And like I said before, each character is so fully fleshed out and realised in a way that really enhances the piece. For me personally, it's not the best designed format, because of course I am very much interested in this sort of ensemble cast, um, following different characters as you piece together one ultimate narrative through the lens of different narratives. I don't think it entirely succeeded in that front, just because some of the smaller moments and some of the characters and some of the narratives that they delivered, like, it wasn't really convincing and it didn't... The, the pacing of them, there was a vast difference between the pacing of each one, so it kind of did feel like there was some the author was more invested in than the others. Sometimes it just felt like it dragged a little bit, and it the way that it started, um, I think, you know, the first two stories. I can understand why she chose to start with them, but I don't think they're necessarily the best ones to start with, because I think it put a tone on the novel which um, perhaps didn't really reflect what the novel was going to be. Uh, however, I do think it is still a very accomplished book and so well translated. The experimental writing style of this, which is kind of like a stream of consciousness, heavily punctuated yet not often full sentenced narrative style, just is done so exquisitely that it kind of, it really keeps you involved um, for as long as possible and keeps you reading on and uh, shows how skillful the author is in more like the, the micromanagement of the words, but perhaps the macro management of the narratives isn't at a level that I was hoping for, but still delivered nonetheless and would still highly recommend it to most people. So it's nitpicking, absolutely, um, I am. Definitely worth a read. And then lastly, uh, the five-star book, very recent read, is um, People From My Neighbourhood by Hiromi Kawakami. I mentioned this in my previous video because she's my favourite author. I requested this to read from Granta and it's released on the 6th of August. Um, so this is an advanced copy that they sent me. I'm very pleased to have received it. I was very excited to read it. I kind of read it the day after I got it. Um, it was always really nice was actually I, through Instagram, I kind of traced uh, my reading journey in a kind of vlog, not really a vlog, vlog on the Instagram stories. Um, and that's still saved on my profile. So if you do want to check that out, you can. And that was a really nice experience of 
reading this book because this, this is a collection of micro fiction. So there's, I think, like 36 or something um, very short stories. Uh, they're like, you know, two to three pages each. They're designed to, to be stories that fit in the palm of your hand in a book that is pocket sized, you know, something that you can dip in and out of very easily. Each story is connected. They're all set around one neighborhood um, and characters crop up time and time again. They all seem to mostly be narrated by one particular character that you never actually get to know. Um, it's a character who is kind of narrating their own neighbourhood in a way that kind of makes you question the reality of this neighbourhood. As the stories progress, they all get like more and more weird, which I really like. It becomes like a surreal journey as to what is reality, what's not reality. And then each time you get to like a different story, you learn something new about a character you'd already, uh, you'd already read about before, which just enhances this uh, sense of weirdness and quirkiness, yet yeah, kind of brilliance at the same time, because it becomes so much more satisfying. But I do think that each individual story is also satisfying within itself. There are, of course, some that are stronger than others, um, but mostly I actually enjoyed, I would say, 90 to 95% of these stories. Um, and I definitely think it is indicative of all the things that I like about Kawakami. All of her books that I've read previously um, kind of culminate into this one very small, very slim, very beautiful book. So it was just a fantastic read. The only issue I do have with this book is I think it is too expensive. It's being released in this um, A format with flaps, so it's paperback but it's like a fancier paperback. Therefore they're charging $12.99 because that's what they usually charge for these kind of paperbacks which they, they release in lieu of a hardback. So they're not going to charge you like a full hardback price, but they are going to charge you more than you would for a uh, B format paperback. However, given that it's, you know, this thin and it's not actually a full size paperback, um, like it really does fit in your pocket. I don't think $12.99 is necessarily the wisest of decisions. I appreciate that translating fiction is more expensive than publishing um, just, you know, a fiction that's already in the native language. So I can understand that the investment in translated fiction is higher, therefore needs to bring in um, a higher value once it's being sold. But I do feel a di bit disappointed by the $12.99 price uh, choice. Um, I'm not entirely sure that I would personally be able to afford it or want to afford it at that level. I do think had it been something like $9.99, so slightly more than your box standard paperback, but not quite up to $12.99 price, then it might make a little bit more sense, especially if it's later released in a B format at, say, $6.99. I think that's a lot more fair to ask. So that's something that, to bear in mind um, when going into buying this, because I would definitely recommend reading this. However, I do appreciate that it might be out of people's price points. So I feel like I've just been talking and talking and talking. Uh, so they're really good books. Highly recommend. Loved reading them. Um, yes, I wouldn't recommend Elizabeth Costello to everybody, though. So bear in mind those points. If they sound like your kind of book, definitely go for it. Definitely read them and then let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. So I'll see you for another video soon. Bye bye.